Right. So, hi, Annie. Good to see you. Hi, um, Yvonne. Good to see you too. Merry Christmas. So it's Roxanne. <laughs> Merry oh, Christmas too. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. So I, I'm so happy to have you today. You have no idea, and I I think that COVID oh, has restricted us in me. so many ways, and so this conversation is so timely. Yeah, obviously. And today we are going to talk yeah. about dance for mental okay. health. Um, basically, I, I wow, give me some moves. It's a more moves. Right, so um, <laughs> yeah, so there's this song that says that, Oh, I want to dance with somebody, you know, that song. I want to mm-hmm. with, with me, you say, Can you sing it? Oh, hey, I want to hey, dance, hey, dance somebody. with somebody, with somebody, with somebody who loves me. Oh. Wanna dance with somebody. Wanna dance with somebody. And then, One of thank my you, Mister DJ, I'll for playing my song. With somebody. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Know you know the thank you, Mister DJ, as well. Uh, you know the thank you, Mister DJ. I know. That's. Well. A, I think. Uh, if yeah. Thank you, Mister DJ, for playing my song. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah. I've been waiting for long. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, yeah, very, very nice to, to get you moving. And sorry, um, yeah, so basically, we want to understand mental health and we want to understand it in the light of creative arts, you know, and essentially yeah. what people can do to, you know, have the fun and not feel, yeah, you know, the obsessive tendencies of hand washing, you know, sanitizing <laughs> and all that. I think this year has has reminded us that, you know, that, that there are so many numerous ways of unleashing stress. And I think that a true, dance for true, mental true. health is, is, is one of the productive ways of, you know, drawing that kind of awareness. Um, very, very, very true, very true. So um, with dance for mental health, I myself, I'm a mental health advocate, and right. you know we do and the. Can you, can you tell us a bit about yourself? I, yeah, so tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so uh, my name is Roxanne Buxin Kofi. I'm uh, a dance coach and I'm a mental health advocate. I'm generally a creative, so I do a lot of things, but these are the two things that I'm focusing on right now: right. dance and mental health advocacy. Right. So prior to the dance. Prior to adding dance to my advocacy, you, I, I already work with an NGO called Africa's Mental Health Matters, where you know we do community engagement-based activity, uh, support groups, we do uh, online webinars, you know, the, the, the theory parts of advocacy, you know. So uh, as a dancer, I noticed or I recognized how my dance life has benefited my emotional uh, well-being. Mm -hmm. And I felt, okay, why don't I also share this with others? Because it was, in the beginning, it was just like, I like to dance. But then I realized that when I dance, I feel so good. And I'm I'm less stressed, I'm less worried, I'm less, you know, tense. So I felt, okay, I need to preach this to people. People also need to benefit from this. So I'm like, okay, why don't I use my dancing and also use it as a, as an avenue to tell people about their mental health and dance for mental health was also like my unconventional way of doing my advocacy. Everybody likes to dance. Even if you don't know how to dance, right. like you met you, you, you sang two of your favorite songs. At least when your favorite song is playing, you just be, you know, nodding your hair, right. you know, shaking your shoulders, not necessarily right. dancing. So the idea of dance is p- pleasant to everyone. The the only um so the idea of dance is pleasant, but then the idea of mental health is quite 
uh, challenging because of the stigma attached to it. When people hear mental health or mental illness or mental health advocates, they be like, hey, mad people, I don't want to be associated with mad people. Yeah. But when they hear dance for mental health, then they are curious that, okay, dance is something that naturally comes to me. Mental health, okay, what is in there? And so now they come for the dance and then they go with more knowledge on mental right. health. So that's my unconventional way of capturing people to give them a dance skill, to make them happy, relax, you know, you know, just be in a good mood. Then right. I present them with the necessary conversations on mental health. So right. that's like killing two birds with one stone or two stones. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Right. So and that, it, that, it's that amazing sense. how you do the connection. For me, um, I think it's, it yeah. is quite intriguing because, I mean, um, not everyone is enthused about about dancing. Let me put it that way. People right. find dancing very youthful. I mean, dance is for the, the young, <laughs> um, basically. So how are you able to blend, you know, these two constructs and also ensure that, you know, you, you, you get everyone along the lifespan? So you don't have all okay, so people, but you have right. all these, you know, coming to to enjoy that space. How how do you preach that? Well, it's I not think, just for young people. I think, right, right. So I mean, that's a very good question. I I, I may have to disagree a little with the associating dance uh, to the youth because everybody dances. Just that is the is we we express dance in different ways. You know, even a three month old baby can dance. Everybody can dance. But I also want to bring this project to, you know, to the basics that everybody can do it. I myself, I'm an expert in Kizomba dance, but then I'm also looking at featuring other dance artists that can come on board and, you know, also teach their dances. So right. it's not restricted to maybe, oh, Kizomba just for the youth or for Popo, but I'm going to have Afro beats. I'm going to have, um, salsa bachata uh, afro house and it doesn't have to be the extremes i'm focusing on the basics you know i'm not trying to hold maybe dance competition where people feel okay i'm insecure i'm not able to reach that level of dance no right. the common goal is get people to move their body just so that they relax so i don't want people to feel that oh I cannot dance, so I cannot be part of this conversation. Right. We really, really want more people to be part of the conversation. So as much as possible, we are trying to make these dances danceable. Right. You know, by the leg and you mean the moves oldie or youngie. Everybody. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, danceable. Right. Easily danceable. Right. <laughs> but Ali, yeah. quickly, I wanted to find out from you also the significance of dance. I mean, locally, I, there's a whole historic antecedent to it. Yeah. And we, we tend to think about dance when okay. we think about festivals and all that. I mean, from a traditional and old folks yeah. perspective. But I mean, looking at yeah. it yeah. through that lens and reflecting it on what you do, for instance, you know, Kizumba and all the contemporary yeah you know, dance moves and all that. What, what, what would you say is, would be the significance? Not just to mental health. I just wanted to yes. get a general okay. perspective to it. Okay, okay. So I'm not really big. Right, right. So I'm not really big with the history of all types of dance, but then with my observation and experience, dance generally has had a long history of bringing people together among right. cultures. Right. You know, when, you know, the certain dance moves have meanings, expressions that convey certain messages. With Kizomba dance, for instance, and the reason why I love Kizomba so much is the history it carries, the significance it carries from Angola, where it originates right. from, right. and how the people of Angola used to gather around and dance Kizomba, Semba for solidarity when there was a civil war right. in their country. And, you know, it was a way of feeling a sense of belongingness. It was a way right. of community, a way of support system. So right. dance has always had a history of building community, building a support uh, system, building healthy relationships among people. Right. So that is the significant message I'm trying to convey through dance, that right. with dance, even if you don't know, like when you come to my class, 
you pair up with strangers, you meet different people, but by the end of the class, you end up smiling and laughing and goofing right. around with them. Right. And that is the power of dance. On right. the same dance floor, we are all the same. We are all yeah. equal and everybody is happy. Yeah. So definitely yeah. using dance as a tool or as a, a, a channel to, to preach mental health is like the best for me so far, because when you can get people to connect and to, you know, uh, uh, relate to one another, even strangers, then you can get them to have certain difficult conversations about right. mental health. Right, um, yeah. right, right. And so can you, you, can you talk about how you have facilitated this as an advocate, as a mental health advocate? Have you been able to facilitate right. that? And also, I'm, I'm asking okay, this yeah. question mm -hmm. because um, if you ask me if, if, or if, if I should recommend dance therapy for any person, I would also want to look at right. a right. bit on personality types and around passion as well. And okay. so that's basically okay. the rationale behind that. How have you been able to facilitate that? And do I say mm. that you're a typical extrovert and so that's how come you enjoy what you do because i see all the moves right, of facebook right. i need a tweaking <laughs> and i'm like wow oh that's so, what <laughs> how are you able to, uh, you able to well i that? think i mean for yourself fortunately, in terms of mental health and the other people you engage yeah yeah with. yeah yeah right i think uh fortunately for me like you said i'm I'm an extroverted person. I, I'm very expressive. I'm very passionate too. I like to really be free and then be happy within myself. So for me to be able to boldly come out there and say, this is what I want to do. And I'm inviting people to join in, in, in this, you know, communion or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that I got to a very comfortable place with it. Because like you said, uh, my extrovert nature has helped, but then also it comes with a lot of challenges. It comes with a lot of backlash. It comes with a lot of misunderstanding. It comes with a lot of uh, tag, especially when you're a woman and you are being free and you are being true, authentic to yourself. Um, it comes with a lot of challenges because here in, in Ghana or in Africa, we, we try to put women in boxes and give them a set of rules to uh, align to or to follow. And when she's doing otherwise, then she starts as rebellious or ungodly or an outcast. So I also realized that a lot it's of other center. women also need an escape. Right. Sorry? No, I, I'll just yeah, add into that. They, they need an escape. They need... Right. Right, 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 right. So I felt that, okay, a lot of people have followed these rules for so long, but deep, deep, deep down, they wish they could have an outlet to just be free and without judgment, with no boundaries. And so indirectly, I'm also trying, I'm motivated by the, the thought of giving women that channel or that free space to just be happy for once, like not to be judged. Nobody is going to ask you right. what you've done to prove your worth or what you've done to do this. No, so... I really, it's, it's, I really want to give that space for men and men and women, but it's most especially women, because they haven't been given much um, press or validation as to the way they live their life. So I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, channel that, and that's the motivation. Sometimes it gets tiring, but then I know the goal, I know what I'm looking out for, and yeah, yeah I keep pushing. I think you said it all. And of and course, I'm looking for the right support. Right, right. Um, you you, you yeah. didn't mention about the barriers in a social cultural context, and yeah, what I mean yeah. with me in terms of that, you know, narrative is that if you ask me, mm. I, I see a whole trend of historical perspective to dance, you know, right. and so when we, we even think about psychology, and we, we we think about the psychology of dance. And mm. I, I, I trace it from a historical perspective, then it makes much more sense even to relate right, it to right. mental health and to, to yeah. think that traditionally dance was a form of therapy for them in those days. You know, um, you look at the Bobo sure. dance and all that, and you look at how they would tweak. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they would say it, it was a normal form of tweaking, you know, but. Sometimes, a bit, 
you know, very much related to what's happening in contemporary uh, tweaking and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think my question would be that, do you see mm. it as a form of catharsis? You know, when we say catharsis in mm -hmm. psychology, basically what it means is that okay. if you have anger, if you have negative emotions, you know, all built in there, and then you need to find a way of expression, then, you know, yes. you adopt yes. these outlets, you know, and it's seen as one of the yes. fundamental channels to mental health. And so if, you, if I would ask any critical okay. question today, I would want to know mm. from you how that has, you know, informed that whole conversation on catharsis for yourself, I mean, as, as a lived right. experience, and then mm. for the many other people you deal with, yeah. with and then as a social media influencer yeah. Yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that, like, to be able to move, you see, movements or maybe dance therapy or anything that involves movement comes with sound or no. But usually you want to enjoy a dance, you have to enjoy the music. Right. And music also adds up to the, what you said, catharsis, you know, the release. Because when the music is good, you don't even need to understand. Right. But then music is very soulful like it speaks to the soul the spirit directly sometimes when the words are uplifting when the lyrics are good they, they they make you feel good they make you smile it really boosts you to move your body and for me in fact that's like my favorite like when i'm feeling very stressed or when i'm feeling very down i just have to have the like a good music on yeah. and that's it even if i'm not dancing actively and i'm just humming to it and nodding my head it does the work for me and like you said a lot of people don't have an outlet or a way of releasing, you know, pent up anger, emotions, bitterness, and we project the wrong way. We project it on our children, we project it on our co-workers, our partners, and because we don't, have, we don't really have a social outlet or, you know, an environment where we can all just be free and then channel that pain or that anger and release it, you know. So I feel that for me personally, that has really helped me. I have not right. really actively done therapy, like regular therapy. I've been to therapy, but anyway, it hasn't been regular. But with dance, I know that it doesn't solve everything, but it puts me in the right state of mind exactly. to really think clearly, to cope better. So I feel, you know, um, channeling your pain, your emotions, and getting the right song and, you know, just being free. And especially also, I want to mention something. The, uh, you, you said something about the twerking and, you know, bo -bo -bo, linking it to the African dances. Most of these dances, as an African woman, I take a lot of pride in these dances because most of them originated from here, Africa. And it, it went across borders, across seas, and then people, you know, remixed it and changed it and packaged it back. So. It's also one of the barriers that I'm trying to, you know, break. Because when you see an African woman twerking or dancing or being sensual, you're like, oh, no, that's from the West. That is bad. That is this. You are not a good woman. But then when you date back, when you go to, like, our uh, four mothers, you know, at the funerals, at the bobo, they are shaking exactly. their bum. You know, they are moving. They are, they are you know, it's... It's a way of, you know, life and culture. And it's part of our culture. So I don't know how we got here where now it's, it's demonized or it's frowned upon. And you are this same thing is good for our health, physical and, you know, psychological. So I want to just, you know, break that or mitigate that stigma that this is normal. Dancing this way, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is what I'm preaching. But yeah. it's for, I'm, I'm unapologetic about how it affects my mental health and my right. emotional well-being. Right. Right. So I don't know if and you answered I, your question. I, I but think <laughs> that's the most important aspect of it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What would you say to the idea that, I mean, these are, ex sometimes these dance like moves, like the Kizomba, I've had the experience of, you know, yeah. watching the performance and all that. And 
So I would want to ask, right? And even as a channel of therapy right. and all that, how do you respond to the idea mm -hmm. that it, it's it's an African and a bit it's sexually painful. explicit? Uh, people feel that okay, it's, it's too touchy as well. Mm -hmm. So how do how right. do we balance it all and still gain the benefits of, of it in terms of mental True. health? You know. Okay, so with the Kizomba, I really like this question because this is something I always say in my class. Where we've seen Kizomba or what we are witnessing in Kizomba lately, I would say has been uh, as a result of miseducation or misinformation. Yes, Kizomba has a grace and elegance to it, maybe a sensual sense to it, because it's usually danced between a man and a woman in an embrace, okay? Yeah. But dancing in an embrace doesn't always have to convey a sexual message. Now, these sexual images that are popping up or that has uh, been attached to Kizomba has been information blown out of context or a proportion right. or misguided. Right. Because when you have the right instructor with the right history, because I am able to appreciate the dance more because of the history attached to it. A lot of people don't know what this dance used to do for people in the past or how yeah. people really held this dance in high esteem. It was, it was not even about sexual, you know, whatever. Two men could dance it, two women could dance. I mean, of course, I mean, there's a, lot, a whole lot of sexual fluidity around. But the point is, it was never an avenue to cross people's boundaries or invade people's spaces and, you know, be sexual. No, 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 no. So for me, I'll speak for myself. Right. And when you come to my class, right. I tell you where this dance is coming from, how our forefathers use it, and how we using this dance right now for this therapy is an honor to our history and our forefathers. And therefore, when you have that knowledge in your head, you will not jeopardize it. You will not play with it. You will not right. think, oh, I'm going to dance with girls and I'm going to rub around. No, you are dancing with consciousness and the right information. Of course, if you are a couple and you know you are your significant other, in an embrace, a whole lot could happen in an embrace. And that is to your own discretion. But as long as the Kizoma dance is concerned, it's never, never, never an avenue to preach, you know, sexual perversion or anything. No, there's a real story behind it. And there were real people who held it in serious high esteem and it's not to be played with. It's just a miss, you know, a, a bad press. Yeah, I would say bad press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what would yeah. be your one? Wow. Yeah. Right, right. What would mm -hmm. be your one word for a dance for mental health? One word. Mm, one word for da a dance for mental health. I'm not sure how, 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 how. Like for the project? Like for anyone who is interested in, in exploring, in exploring uh, a dance for mental health. I mean, if you, you have to Mm. counsel someone who is down yeah. you know has been right. through a lot in COVID and is finding ways mm -hmm. for expression and and so right. it's it's actually considering a dance for mental health what would be the one word for that person yeah. I would say release release like if there's any word that comes to mind in terms of with regards to dance for mental health release is the perfect word because as you dance you are expressing pent up you know energy motion releasing and that's the goal really to release tension and to relax and then be in the right frame of mind and to talk so release and network if, if i'm allowed to say two words so yeah thank yeah. you and there'll be more other dances so just follow us on Instagram and you'll be updated. Thank you. Can, can you give us one, one, one of your moves before you, you sign off? Oh. Should I sing <laughs> for you? Should I sing I for ready. you? Should I sing for you? I wasn't you? ready. Trust me. <laughs> Should I sing for you? 
Oh my God, I should have seen this coming. I'm so not ready. Come but on. you can sing, I can move. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 Come on. 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 Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you and your family. And let's keep doing this on a regular. I really like it. Yes. Yes. Thank you too. Bye. Ah, you should also dance now. You should also dance. Don't run away. Ah. Oh, I wanna dance with somebody.